Yo, what's good guys? Today we are reviewing the new Yorkville NX-12P. Stay tuned. Now you know the deal. If you haven't seen this channel yet and like this type of content, please make sure to like down below. I'll be doing gear reviews, gig vlogs, and all DJ related stuff in the future. Let's get into it. So I'm especially excited for this review because I've actually owned a pair of NX55s back in the day and I used to rent 750s and just NX55s were amazing back in the day for DJs, for instrumentalists, performers and stuff. So a lot of you guys I'm sure know about the NX series and their reliability over the past 20 years, right? So this is like an iteration of the NX series, the new version, modern version. Now Yorkville has really outdone themselves with this model. There is so much going on inside this cabinet, like exceptional sound processing, limiting, extended connectivity, and of course, amazing sound. Now the NX-12Ps were specifically engineered for DJs and musicians. They're great for mains at front of the house, monitors, stage monitors, or side fills. Now, just like a lot of the new uh, speakers that are coming out from Yorkville, this design is very modern, rounded edges, sleek, very, industrial looking it's made of uh, polypropylene plastic and of course the signature metal grill that yorkville is known for now a few specs to note it is a 12 inch woofer it has three selectable modes to choose from on the back and of course it has three channels on the back as well now just like all new speakers coming out today it does have bluetooth connectivity so you can connect all your mobile devices and iPads and laptops to it. As well, you can add another NX12P and pair that so you can have the perfect stereo sound. Now, I like that they added in an extra handle. So this has two handles now, um, one on the top, so you can carry it around on the top, and of course, one on the side, as opposed to the old NX55s that only had one on the side. Now these also come with fly points as well, three fly points with M8 threading. Uh, there's two at the top and one at the back at the bottom and which make it easier to install in any venue. Now this is a powered loudspeaker and I did mention before that it has a 12 inch woofer with a one inch high frequency compression driver. Now the power rating on the speaker is 4,850 watts peak and 1,450 watts program with a max SPL of 128 decibels peak. Now the weight of the speaker is pretty standard among 12 inch speakers in the industry. It comes in at about 45.3 pounds. Now this is the NX12P and this line also has the NX8P, which is an eight inch speaker and on paper also has impressive specs. Now, speaking of specs, I didn't touch upon a lot of the specs on this speaker. So I'm gonna put on the specs on the screen right now so you can pause it at any time in this video and check it out. So now we're gonna check out the back of the speaker and what's going on there. Let's go. Okay guys, so here is the back of the NX12P. Now, as you can see, there are three channels here. The first two channels are a line and mic channels, and they take uh, both XLR and quarter inch in them. And they actually both have 48 volts of phantom power if you're using a condenser microphone. Um, they have convenient knobs here that you can tell with, with the notches on and then they have an LED uh, light here which indicates green if there's a line level signal coming through or it also turns red when it starts to clip. Um, the third channel you can plug in a 1 8 inch headphone jack or alternatively you can have 
Bluetooth and pair it on this channel and control the actual volume. Now these buttons, all the buttons here light up. Um, these are input buttons on the first two channels indicate line and mic level, so you can see what you're on. They have um, a crossover as well, which is a high pass filter. Uh, if you're using uh, a bass or a sub, it cuts out the frequencies under 90 hertz right here for both channels. I love I love the buttons on here because they all light up and you can see what, what mode you're on, right? Even the Bluetooth one. Um, on the master, you can actually control all of the levels here on all of the, the channels. So this is the master volume for everything. It also has a crossover as well that you can add a sub in and it'll cut all the frequencies out of um, 100 hertz right here and then of course it has the modes these are the modes right here live mode so if you have a musician or a piano player instruments or whatever going through here you put it on that mode club mode is usually for the DJs and music playback and monitor mode is when you're using it as a monitor. This is the XLR in, so when you're plugging it in straight, and then this is the, the main out if you're gonna connect it to an external speaker. Okay. okay, like all of my other gear reviews, I test them out in the real world. So, I took two of these and tested them out last week at two of my weddings to give you some real world experience on these. Let's go. All right, guys, so here is the dinner area. I only have one speaker here. It doesn't require a full setup because we're only staying here for the dinner. And then we're gonna move over to the lounge where I'm gonna get the speaker and put it with the other one. So, so we're gonna see how well it does in this room. I'm sure it's fine. So party is done, it's one o'clock. You know what, I only used one speaker. I didn't even need the other one. People were telling me to turn it down. It's pretty good, man, damn. This thing is loud and it's- All right, guys, I'm at my second event using these speakers. Look at this face, it's a, this is the reception. It's not too big. It's nice space, it's a dance floor pretty much. We'll see how it does. Um, I think these are a little bit overkill. For this but we'll see I'll, I'll give you guys my opinion later Bye. We just finished the party. Let me see the lighting, okay. We just finished the party. I used two of these and <laughs> it was just overkill. I only put them halfway on the main, so yeah. There's a lot more headroom with these guys. These guys bump. This room, it filled it up and then some. Okay, so what'd you guys think about the speaker? Not bad, right? Now, keep in mind for that first event, I only had to use one. I, I could only use one because when I when I first started the, the dancing set, somebody already told me to turn it down because it was way too loud. I was like, okay. And I had the second speaker ready to go, but I didn't even bother turning it on because somebody complained and they would have complained even more if I did, right? So. There's no point, but it did very, very well. A little bit overkill for that first event. For the second event, however, there was no way I wasn't going to use both speakers. You know, there was just under 60 people there, but it really filled up the, the whole space. And I only kept the mains here on half, halfway. So I wasn't pushing it by any means, but you could tell that, that the crowd, they loved it. The dance floor was full at the beginning, and then you can see that they're starting to move back a little bit, which is an indication that your speakers are loud, and they're trying to find the sweet spot on the dance floor where it sounds 
good, right? It's not too loud and it's just, they're feeling it. And of course, I was using an external mixer as well, which I always recommend you use an external mixer for every event because it gives you more options for uh, a microphone, more microphones, more inputs if you wanna add in an iPad or, or whatever, backups. It gives you more headroom. I wish I did a bigger event and tested them out there, but just by testing them out this past weekend at those events, I'm like, okay, this, this guy has juice. I could tell there was a lot more it could have it could have gave, and it didn't even clip at all when I used them. So let's talk about pricing now. At the time of shooting this video, this speaker cost one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars Canadian. So that comes out to around a thousand dollars U.S. And I think it's pretty much on par with um, the release and price of the NX55 back in the day when it first came out, like around $1,000 or so. So inflation and all kind of evens out. I think this is just below the Parasource line and above the YXL line. So there's the Elites, the Parasource, and then there's the NX line, and then there's the YXL line. Now my honest thoughts of the speaker, it's an excellent speaker. Now, I know I say that about a lot of the speakers or pretty much every speaker, but honestly, I've had the NX55s. As the predecessor, this lives up to it. If you guys have had or tried the NX55s and know its potential and reliability, ruggedness and everything, this is the next step up, the evolution of the NX series. It does the job and then some. It was total overkill for those two events that I did, but um, I got a glimpse of how they, they work. And I'm pretty sure they can handle medium sized events to large events as well, um, very, very well. So yeah, I love the speaker, awesome. That's it, that's my review. If you guys liked it, please like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. A lot more videos coming at you. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys soon, right? This is DJ9 signing off.